It's just not the economics. People matter. And I think the general thrust of the economy in each of these countries is geared towards a certain class. It's geared towards a certain uh, kind of a development model where only a certain class will benefit from it and a large section will be left out. It's just not the economics which actually should be at the heart of it. More and more uh, we have the public-private partnerships and the role of the state uh, is not as prominent as it should be. And I think generally what we see in South Africa is not very different from other parts of the world, including in BRICS countries. Uh, private schooling is an industry that is growing uh, very aggressively. Our fees are already as high as they can. They skyrocket. They're not keeping up with inflation. They're higher than inflation and we want the fees to drop because already we are coming from underpoverished, poor backgrounds, especially as black people in this country. We are, very, we are the least of the least, so our government must listen to our demands and take into consideration that our fees, we can't afford to go to these schools anymore. In the villages, the, um, um, because of the uh, younger people, uh, 15 to 45 year old, going to the urban areas, um, now it also impacted on the agriculture in a way. But most important, the, um, the village level uh, healthcare education, uh, all of them also suffered uh, in a way in uh, the village level uh, uh, governance issues. Now after the Soviet disintegration and, and the coming up of the independent Russian Federation, uh, the state withdrew a lot of benefits uh, and subsidies uh, to institutions including to educational institutions. So while literacy continued to be very high, uh, but there was a decline in some of the higher educational institutions. But with the coming of Putin, he has again uh, given emphasis to both uh, education and health. O Estado está presente na maré, né? É, porém, a presença do Estado é muito precarizada também. Então, serviços como saúde, educação, é, saneamento básico, água, luz, energia. É, são oferecidos, mas são oferecidos de maneira muito precária. Então, tanto o mercado quanto o Estado faltam é, nesse momento que são mais importantes para a população. India e países no global south must expand at the frontiers of technology, at the frontiers of knowledge, at the frontiers of research and design, and must invest in those future possibilities. Simply because BRICS being at the receiving end in history, uh, in the past and having been denied these opportunities of in situ development of research, uh, technology, design, thinking, knowledge, uh, is, is asserting itself in those frontiers, partly through the earlier gains of reverse uh, engineering, as is called, but of course not now, uh, given the kind of knowledge capital that exists in the BRICS countries. It's, it's, a, huge, uh, it's a huge potentiality for future, uh, provided of course it's under public oversight and provided of course it's put to a public good and social good which I believe holds the key here. I think one of the areas where BRICS, the BRICS nations have to take a stand against neoliberalism and its rational, rational which doesn't make sense to most of us is the question of privatization. We cannot leave essential services to the markets. People need healthcare to be alive, children need education to progress in life. And we see across the nation an intensification of privatization of essential services. So that would be a, a very a vital project across BRICS nations to see how instead of shrinking the state, we expand the state with a focus on meeting the needs, the livelihood needs of, of the poor. That is the obligation of states. That's our vision of a 
democratic and developmental state.